Hello and welcome to this short video where I present Peering Manager. I'm Wolfgang Tremmel and I run the DKIX Academy. So what's Peering Manager? Peering Manager is a piece of software which makes your life as a Peering Manager easier. Let me show you, let me start screen sharing. So you can find all about Peering Manager on peering-manager.net. It's open source, it's freely available, and uh, it runs on any Linux-based server. If you want to try it out, there's also a Docker image available, which gets you up and running in five minutes. But I'm not showing you the installation today. I'm going to show you how to use that. So let's head over to my installation of Peering Manager. I also run an autonomous system for teaching and research purposes, AS196610, and I have completely converted my configuration setup to Peering Manager. So this is the login screen. Uh, well, let's have, let's log in. So the start screen shows you all kind of information about which peerings are already configured. But today I'm going to show you how to set up a new peering with an autonomous system and how easy that is. So let's go to internet exchanges. I'm present at quite a number of DKIX exchanges, but today let's head to DKIX Frankfurt. And here you see the connections, the peering sessions I already have, but I want to peer with a new AS here. So I'm going to available peers. And this lists here all the ASs present at DKIX Frankfurt. It shows you the name, the autonomous system, the IPv4 and IPv6 address, the speed which they are connected and whether they are peering with the route server or not. Where do we get this information from? We get it from PeeringDB. Peering Manager syncs with PeeringDB and imports all information available there. So let's have a look for peers with an open peering policy. I select open here on the right and click on apply. And this gives me all the peers with an open peering policy. Okay, I have prepared something. So I'm now looking for AS61438 enter the AS number here, click on apply. This gives me the entry for IP IT consult, and this will be my example for this video. So I simply select it and click on add selected. And this gives me the two possible sessions I can configure in Frankfurt. I can enter my own service reference here. I'm not doing that. It's not a route server session. You can basically uh, put an import and export policy here. They are pre-configured by myself for uh, my installation of Peering Manager. And well, have a look here. So this is a private peering. So I select private peering in here in import and I select here private peering out in export policy. And I'm doing the same for the IPv4 session private peering in for import and private peering out for the export policy. And now I'm clicking on import and basically the sessions are not configured yet, but they are prepared. Let's have a look about this autonomous system I have just added. So here we go. Here we have IP IT consult. And this is the information they already got from PeeringDB. So the max prefix entry, the general policy, and I always can click on synchronize and it gets updated information from PeeringDB. So what else can I do here? I can also basically set an import and export policy based on the on AS level, so I can do these policies on different levels. I can add communities. For example, I can say, well, since we are peering in Frankfurt, I have received that from Europe in Germany, and I want to announce this 
to only my customers. So these are pre-prepared policies I have prepared for a peering manager already. I'm going to show you later how to define that. So, and that's all. And another thing is I have prepared some tags. And for tags, I can say, for example, I don't know this guy. Well, I actually do know him, but I can say, I want to filter all the prefixes I have received from this autonomous system. I can add so a filter prefixes command and you might know Cisco routers. They have a command soft reconfiguration inbound, which adds a configuration tag. And I also can add this as a tag here. And now I click on save and here is the overview. Here on the lower left, you can see where else I could peer with them. I'm not doing that now. What I do now is I'm going to push this as a configuration to my router. So I'm clicking here on deployment. I'm selecting routers. This is the only one router I have. And I click here on configuration what it does now it basically builds the complete router configuration with all the peers i have configured of course there's only one change we will see that what happened when once the configuration is built so the configuration is built i can scroll through it it's lengthy because it's well it's not the only peer i have configured um but I'm, at the moment, I'm only interested in the differences. What has changed uh, since I have configured this peer? So I, I make sure this compare before commit is uh, selected and I click on deploy. What happens now is that peering manager pushes the configuration to the router and compares it or the router compares it with the existing configuration and it shows me the differences. So here you see the differences in configuration I just generated when I uh, added my peer. So here we have some large communities being uh, defined. Here we have some route policies. This is for Cisco IOS XR, where you can apply policies within each other, which makes this quite easy. And at the end, we have two BGP sessions. Here we have uh, the IPv4 session. We have the route policy applied. We have the max prefix value and we have the route policy for output. And uh, here we have the same for IPv6. So now I click on commit changes. I'm happy. It looks good. I'm clicking on commit changes and this is now pushed to the router and the sessions are configured. So the button shows green. The configuration has been saved. Let's close that window and let's head over to the router console and let's have a look if the session is really there. So here we go. Show BGP summary and uh, include 61438 that was the as we have just added and here we go here we do have the session it's not up yet because of course the other side hasn't configured their part yet but the session is configured all the route policies are installed and uh, just a few mouse clicks so really really easy now how does the magic work? Well, the magician never reveals his tricks, but I'm not a magician, I'm a network engineer, and I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So if you go to uh, configurations, and there I have a template, and that template basically converts the information in Peering Manager to a router config. This template, of course, is specific here from my needs, and it is also specific to the Cisco IOS XR platform. But you can write your own templates. It took me, well, two days to write this one because, well, I was not familiar with the Jinja 2 language, and uh, I was not familiar at all, and it took me only two days to write it and to uh, get the bugs out. But it's really, really easy to write a template 
for your router you can make it as specific or as uh, general as you want and uh, it takes you makes your peering daily business way easier if you can just configure just click your peerings and push them to your router so this was about peering manager thanks for listening i'm wolfgang trammel and i usually run the dkicks academy see you next time